We Need Each Other is a podcast about the importance of human interaction. It provides reminders that we are not intended to live in isolation. Human beings need each other. The things about another that pisses you off and the things that take you over the moon are all opportunities to see through another's eyes, recognize their intrinsic value, and then look more deeply within ourselves to find the love that's always there. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to today's episode of We Need Each Other. And so I've discovered this gentleman whose name is Zion Shabazz. And we need Zion Shabazz and what he does in, in, in life. He was introduced to me by a very dear friend of mine. And I just really wanted to have him on the podcast. So let me tell you a little bit about Zion. He is what is called a spiritual scientist. He's based in Los Angeles, and Zion has studied and practiced around the world to uncover and master an incredibly effective combination of healing tools available. Zion targets the root of the physical or emotional stress in order to facilitate a safe transformation of that energy. In this way, he is working toward treating the cause rather than temporarily treating the symptom. Zion's purpose with this work is to empower and support others with practical methods of practical methods geared towards realizing conscious communion with their higher self. This direct communication leads to inner peace and enjoying a virtuous lifestyle that no one can ever take away. Well, we certainly do need that, don't we? Absolutely. Something that no one can ever take away because it is a part of who we are. Welcome, Zion. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here with us today. Mm -hmm. So is that the definition of what a spiritual scientist is? Can you help us understand a little bit more deeply? Yeah. So uh, That's an interesting uh, terminology, spiritual scientist. Right. And it was conceived because I had to come up with a title. Uh, I'm not one for titles. I just. Oh, OK. I'm not one for titles. It's just I am that I am. And when I was uh, trying to come mm-hmm. up with something, yes. spirituality and science came together as one because my goal is to help harmonize things. And we seem to separate those two things during in our mm. society right now. So it's like, hey, they're one in the same thing. Let me show you how. But in a nutshell, it's just the study of mm. ourselves and the universe. And once we know ourselves, we know the universe as above, so below, as within, as without. So it's bringing those together mm. and mm. just giving myself a title to work with, a working title, I should say, because if I had to choose the title, I would just go with black. I would just go with black. It's mm. not about uh, geography. Mm. It's not about a locale. Black is just to denote my ancestry. And all the work that I do is yeah. tied in with knowing myself and knowing my ancestors. Yes, yes, yes. So you used, when I was reading your bio, it said transforming energy. And I understand what you mean. I'm an energy therapist, but a lot of people, when I, man, when I even tell people what I do, they're like, huh? <laughs> so explain to our listeners what transforming energy means. Right. So everything is vibration. Everything is vibration. And they just, they move at different mm-hmm. speeds, right? So what I see is at a certain vibration, what I feel, what I touch, all of the senses Uh, The tone in our voice when you touch something, um, one of the best examples to use is just if we look at an apple, uh, you know exactly what it tastes like, what it looks like, what it sounds like when you bite into it. All these are different vibrations. And when you say apple, that's the name of the song that carries all of those vibrations together. And we see what that represents. Mm. So when we have all all of these different vibrations we can also call them energy. Does that does that make sense? Mm-hmm. We can call that energy as well. And it certainly makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so there's these different vibrations and emotions carry vibrations as well, right? So emotions mm-hmm. carry a certain vibration. Mm-hmm. If you ask someone to walk like they're happy, 
they're going to walk with a certain vibration. And then if you ask them to walk like they're depressed and they're mm. sad, they're going to walk with a certain lower vibration. So what we're doing mm -hmm. is when I talk about transforming those energies is we're going to harmonize those vibrations so that we can operate at our highest selves. Uh, one of the another good example that I learned. And how was, do you harmonize them? OK, so let's take uh, the science behind noise canceling headphones, for example. The way that noise canceling headphones work mm -hmm. is they take the noise from the outside and then they match that noise with the equal and opposite frequency so that it cancels out the sound. So uh, the way we harmonize those lower vibrations is we match them with the equal and opposite frequency. Okay, if, if sadness is something that I'm dealing with, the equal and opposite frequency is joy. If abandonment is a frequency that I'm working with, then the equal and opposite would be cooperation, togetherness, unity. So uh, what we do is we identify these lower vibrations, so to speak, and we get to a place of understanding, a place of forgiving, and then ultimately a place of gratitude. Being grateful for some of these uh, mm -hmm. situations, these issues, uh, negativity that we have dealt with, atrocities even, traumas from our childhood, things that have been passed mm -hmm. down from our ancestors to us, actually getting to a place of gratitude for those things. And, and then it nullifies it. And we find a place of inner peace and inner calm because we understand why those things happened. And we understand mm -hmm. that as God operating, um, incarnated in us, we are co-creators and, and in a sense help facilitate those situations so that we can learn something. So once we identify that and we're grateful for it, whew, it brings an indescribable joy that can't be and, described. You know, <laughs> it's the same type of work. It's the same type of work that I do, Zion. So I, I completely understand what you're saying. That is not necessarily, it depends on the, where that person is that comes to you for this work. It's not necessarily an easy path to walk for them, to be grateful for things that they feel are traumatic in their lives. How do you walk them through that? How do you get them from A to Z? Uh, exactly like you just said, from A to Z there is a progression to it. There are mm -hmm. some things that happened from my childhood. When I first started doing this work, I was like, oh, cool. I got it. I'm healed from it. And then like two or three years later, mm -hmm. something came back mm -hmm. and I was like, ah, no, you're not done. And then I started to work on it again. And I realized layers. that there was layers to it and I was getting prepped for it. So the main thing, like they always say, stop and smell the roses. It's to realize your progression in it. Um, I use this example a lot. If someone is eating five Big Macs this week and next week they eat four and then the next week they eat three, I'm happy for them all the way. Even when they get to one Big Mac, I will buy it for them. Yes. You're making progress, brother. You're making progress. Sister. Yes. So understand. We celebrate. Celebrate the progress and know that the greatest things mm -hmm. ever that are worth more than silver and gold are going to take some work. They're going to take some effort. When we play uh, the video games, Mario Brothers, if you started playing that video game and all you had to do was run across the stage and at the end you, you won, no one would play. You, you need little obstacles. Right. You need detours. You need to get the mushroom and grow big, get the flowers, shoot a fireball, and learn all these different things. And then once you get to Mario 3, you actually learn how to fly. So... As above, so below. We have to mm. crawl before we can walk, walk before we can run, run before we can fly, fly before we can dematerialize, dematerialize before we can travel mentally. So there's this mm. progression that we have to take. But people see the, the glitz and glamour. They're like, oh, astral traveling. Let me do that. How do I do that? And they start to go yeah. too fast. There is a, a patience that we have to have because... When I again, when I was early on in my journey, when I first started activating things, I said, do I want to go fast or do I want to go slow and steady? And I chose slow and steady because if I wrote down a list 
of the 10 most important things that I want for my entire lifetime. The 10 most beautiful, important things that I want for my entire lifetime. If it happened today, all of them, it would be a nightmare. Oh, I met my soulmate. Mm-hmm. I get to travel. I got my dream job. Yes. I got all the money I want. I can astral travel. I can do this. I've got 10 kids. I've got like, you know, if all of that happened today, it would be a nightmare. And we're talking about the most beautiful things that I could ever desire and want. So slow and steady, mm-hmm. slow and steady. So that's how we walk through. It's it's with patience. Um And I like the word patience, even when it comes to clients, because it reminds us to be patient with them and for them to be patient with themselves. Mm -hmm. So, yes, uh, yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So we just meet them where they're at. And we're looking we're looking at a very impatient society, especially right now. It seems since people were quarantined and they're and they've come back out, it seems like people are more impatient than ever. Mm-hmm. Have you they're noticed getting, that? They're still getting Amazon Prime delivered to them the same day. So it's like, hey, why should anything else blow up? <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. But it's even, yeah, you know, patience. Some people... You know, I love your analogy. Go ahead. I, the the uh, Mario Brothers analogy. I love that. That if people, because, you know, people do play video games. And if they could keep in mind... That it's really kind of demonstrating the way life is, then maybe they could learn even from that to be, to, that obstacles are important. You know, obstacles teach us how to climb higher or how to go around or, you know, and those are the things that we grow through and we're here to grow, right? Aren't we here to grow? Absolutely. And, those are the even the obstacles that we're aware of. Uh, sometimes it's like, imagine you're traveling through a jungle and you've got your idea on the path that you're supposed to take. And then there's this big tree in your way all of a sudden. You have to go around it. And actually, maybe your ancestors, your higher self, knocked that tree down because there is a jaguar, you know, 10 paces beyond that it was protecting you from. So when mm-hmm. we work with our ancestors, mm-hmm. when we or having that conscious communication with our higher self, when we take one step towards them, they take 10 towards us. So there's some obstacles, some mistakes, some things we, we do have to have a, a certain level of trust in until we're, we're consciously aware of what's going on. That's the blessing in disguise, so to speak. So let's talk about our ancestors a little bit, because again, It's a tricky thing for some people, you know, Aunt Sally's gone. She's just gone. You know, there's no. um, And then so there's an idea of, oh, my God, they're ghosts and they're scary. And if you're having a realization as you are and a belief and an understanding, as I do as well, of our ancestors and the availability of them, that's a whole different take. So can you explain that a little bit better for our listeners to be able to take it in at a different level? Absolutely. Because you do something called ancestral healing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So we have what we call biological ancestors and we have spiritual ancestors. Uh, I'll start and maybe just stick to biological because that's the easiest to kind of comprehend right now. Um there are things that my grandmother went through, for example, things that happened to her, things that she did to other mm-hmm. people that may have not been fully resolved. And those vibrations that we talked about, those frequencies, if they haven't been resolved, they can transfer down through my mother and transfer down to me. That's the study of epigenetics. So we're born already with a certain frequency based on our parents and grandparents, so on and so forth. So that's one part of it. And then there's these patterns that they have continued to play out for many, and many generations. And this can just happen in terms of the way that they treat us or they raise us. Uh, one example I like to use is when I was a child, if I said something disrespectful to my mother, she would say, don't get smart with me. And as a child, I was like, what does that mean? 
And then once I got older, I was oh, okay, that's coming from slavery times because if the child got caught reading or bettering themselves intellectually, they would get whipped, the mom would get whipped. So, hey, just go out there and work. Don't get smart. Get back home. Let's survive for another day. So things like that. There's, I mean, so many, you know, numerous examples of that happening. So this is how things are passed down through our ancestors biologically, those patterns and things within our DNA. Mm. Spiritually, for, for biological and spiritual ancestors, none of them need our help with healing right now. It's happening within mm -hmm. us that we need the healing, things that have been passed down. This is how we heal seven generations in the past because we're just healing ourselves. So once we do all of this, once we start mm -hmm. to understand that, that it's all within us, that's when the real light bulb goes off. So if you study like the Egyptian book of coming forth by day and night, or some people call it the Egyptian book of the dead, um, they talk about the Osirian myth, which is, you know, Aset, uh, Horus, uh, some people say Isis, those are the Greek terms, but um, all these different gods, all these different deities only represent aspects of ourselves. All of that's within us. So even as we're working with all of our ancestors, they are aspects within us as well. That's why they say heal yourself, heal the world. So we don't try to focus so much yes. on them as as if they're like separate from us, but they help show us different things. And the reason we start, generally we start with our biological ancestors is because we know those energies. I know what my grandma feels like, what she smelled like, how she acted, mm. what her personality was like. I can resonate mm. with that mm -hmm. energy a lot easier than I can, you know, an uncle seven generations back. I don't know what that is. So I started with the ones that I know. Is that a good, is that a good start for our ancestors? Yeah, yes. So then in in that in thinking that it's really about us healing ourselves, what is ancestral healing? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? So, because you uh, do something that's called ancestral healing. Yes. Actually, I call it ancestral clearing. Clearing. Um ancestral clearing and clearing. Okay. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So the clearing is uh, those impurities, those negativities that we need to clear out, the harmonizing of that. Uh, but it's, uh, it has a double meaning as well because the clearing is also clearing the pathway. Clearing the pathway for communication with our higher self because that's the ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. That's the ultimate goal is to have conscious communication with our mm -hmm. higher self. There is no church that we have to go to. If you go to church, that's fine. But I'm saying there's no church that we have to go to. Uh, our temple, our body is that church that God resides in. We understand that as unity, we're all a part of that. Mm -hmm. So with that, we walk sacredly. There's no land that we have to go to because wherever we walk is sacred. And once we start doing this, once we start ritualizing our activities, in a sense, we become the altar. If you have an ancestral altar, ultimately we become the altar ourselves. All those different things are just symbolic representations mm. of what's already inside of us that we're trying to activate. So we're using our senses of seeing, touching, feeling, smelling, tasting to record and help activate things within us to help activate that God particle within. Mm. Mm. That's beautiful. I love I love that explanation of that. That that uh, you know having an altar is a good thing. You know, um, mm -hmm. but realizing that it's a representation of what is inside of us. Yeah, I, I like that. That's beautiful. So, Zion, how did you get, tell me about your childhood. How did you get from there to here? Mm -hmm. Like, we kind of really start off there, but then it's all taken away from us as kids, you know. So, exactly. how did you get through your pathway to this? 
Mm. That is the number one thing. A lot of things were taken away from us as children, especially that that fearlessness and that courage that we had. I mean, we would just do, we would do things as kids that we would not do today. Like what? Jumping off of the roof? <laughs> but um, right, yeah, right. <laughs> when, when I look good back thing. on it, <laughs> it is a good thing. It is a good thing. We need to protect ourselves. Um, when I look back on it, there's so many different things that were triggered that I just didn't have the 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 language to express. But there were times as a child where I felt like I was like everyone around me was crazy and everyone was robots and they didn't know what was going on. Um living in an apartment with my mom, it was I'm looking at people go to work every day, come back, watch TV, go to sleep, rinse and repeat. And some, it just never felt right. And then the reason I bring up growing up in an apartment is because Santa Claus never really worked for me. It never worked for me. I was like, <laughs> what chimney? Because we don't have a chimney. I sleep in the living room. This old fat <laughs> white man right. is not sneaking by me <laughs> to drop off presents. So like, I just... I had this skepticism right. that was always there. Like, man, if they're lying to me about a Santa Claus, what else could they be lying about? So that was just always kind of under, underlying. And then uh, once I graduated high school, I, I wanted to be an actor. And I was going to go major in acting, but I kind of got talked out of it. It's like, oh, you need to do something that's more safe. That's the thing. And again, that's my my family that's part of my family look at what we've gone through we were slaves sharecroppers there's this like steady progression and now it's like well now you need to get a degree and now you need to get a good job so there was so that's that kind of uh took me off of what i thought was my path at that time and then once i graduated college mm -hmm. i started working the the regular nine to fives in the financial industry and then at some point I was like, you know what? I'm going to try this acting thing. And then I started doing background work just to kind of understand mm -hmm. the set life a bit. And I started substitute teaching so that I could help pay the bills. And while I was substitute teaching, someone at my old school that I used to go to found out that I was substitute teaching and they invited me to apply for a fellowship program. And in that fellowship program, I had a mentor teacher. So... I was working alongside him for a year and basically got groomed to become a full-time teacher. So acting kind of got put off to the side again and I followed that path of teaching. And then again, at some point, it was like, you know what? I'm telling kids to follow their dreams and do this and you need this and you need that and I'm not being true to myself. So I eventually transitioned out of uh, teaching and coaching and running summer school programs and I did a lot of things at that school or a lot of hats. Put it all aside and went to acting. <laughs> Was doing that for a couple mm -hmm. of years. And on set, I met um, I met someone who introduced me to some of the, um, the more powerful healing plant medicines. And once I started mm -hmm. working with those, mm -hmm. everything started coming back. And then I was actually exposed to some healing um modalities that are innate within me that are actually with <laughs> innate within all of us but they were activated and became conscious so once i realized that it was like ah oh, i need to follow this this is what i need to follow so then i just slowly started doing things i was i was really hungry really hungry in the sense of uh mm, mm. figuring out who i am and what this is all about because i was at this point right before the the plant medicines um, I was on the fence of whether God existed or not, whether there was a God. So at this mm. point in my life, I'm reading mm. everything. I'm reading books on Buddhism, Sufism, Gnosticism, um, atheists. I, like I, whoever wrote it, whoever thought they knew the answers, I read it. And I just wanted to figure things out for myself, but take it mm. all in. So um, I had an experience that showed me some gifts 
Uh, that's really hard to get into and that's a super long story. But once some things were revealed, I, I shared that story with a couple of people that I thought wouldn't look at me like I was crazy. <laughs> and one of those people, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we yeah, have like a, the deal. <laughs> that is the deal. And I still have family that looked at me like I'm crazy. But anyways, um, during this yeah, conversation, I know me too. <laughs> <laughs> during this conversation, uh, at the end, I had mm-hmm. a page of notes on things that I could do, things that I could work on. Uh, one was to learn Reiki, get attuned with Reiki for, so I could start to understand energy a little better, like you said earlier, energy. And mm-hmm. ancestral clearing was one of them. So uh, the guy who was teaching the courses, he had something going on in Arizona. I flew out there, stayed with a friend for a weekend, uh, paid for the full course, did the beginning levels and the advanced levels, and then took those and just started practicing on myself all the time all mm-hmm. the time and that's uh, that's the other component of the spiritual sciences part is when i speak about these things they, they're coming from firsthand experience um i've either read the book or i've tried the plant mm-hmm. or i've tried the modality <laughs> like i've done it on myself i've done the fasting i did the smoothie Which fast for 21 make, days that makes all the difference in the world <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah because then you yes. know that's the only way you can fully know is if you have the experience. Because you're talking from what you know. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. Uh, you know, we have a lot of people who are influencers out there that are talking from what they read in a book, mm-hmm. you know, or what somebody said. Or even, you know, I even find, you know, that there are people out there who are white and want to be allies with black people right now who are talking from something that they heard as if they're the expert. You're an expert when you have walked the walk, then you can really talk the talk. And that's what I hear you speaking about. Can you give um, some examples of transformation that you may have seen with clients that you've worked with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have one. So I I channeled this uh, healing the woman ritual, which is basically uh, we all come from a woman. And the idea is to start the healing work on the womb for women and then for men to uh, support that and have reverence for it. So uh, as a part of this ritual, there's this uh, identifying generational patterns and breaking them. And then there's a, the second portion, which is one of the keys to full healing is gratitude. So you start to analyze what you went through with your mother and then actually become grateful for it. So a light example would be Mm. my mom didn't call me enough. Instead of being negative about it, you could say, well, I've learned to call my children more. And if your mom is kind of (laughs) overbearing and calls too much, instead of being negative about it, you could say, ah, I've learned to give my children space. So um, I, I have a client that I've worked with on with this ritual and he's taken that gratitude and decided on his own to start doing a gratitude journal every morning which a lot of us have done but he had trouble figuring out like Mm -hmm. I'm running out of things to be grateful for with my mother but then he started to be creative and see those things Uh like I just alluded to so now he's shifted his perception and his focus because this becomes such a key thing when I, my old car, when I had a Cadillac, um, when I first got that Cadillac, as soon as I bought it, it started driving. All of a sudden, I saw a thousand of them on the road. And it was, they were always there. <laughs> yeah. My right, perception right, right, right. wasn't there. So now he's shifted his focus and his perception. Yeah. And now he's seeing more gratitude in everything. Yes. So uh, that, that would be one yeah. example. Um, some of them are just, uh, physical you know, good uh, example. I had, yeah, I had a uh, a client who just had almost like a, a like a chronic pain in her knee that's just been there for years, and with the ancestral clearing work, we understand that all of our physical illnesses originate from some emotional stress, some character deficiency. And 
all of the different organs, all the different parts in our body hold these things. Um, we might hold anger in our jaws. That's why we clench our jaws. So there's all these different things. Um, so she had done all of the physical therapy, right? You know, she had put all the ointments on, but she hadn't got to the emotional root of it. And after one session, I mean, this was early on in my career too. So like after one session, she hit me up and she was like, uh, I don't want to jinx it, but it's not there anymore. And these are the type of things that just happen weekly. I see it all the time. And the first person that it happened to was me. I had a pain in my upper right back. Mm -hmm. What was that about? Oh, stabbed in the back by a male authority figure. Went back to my childhood, cleared it. That was the thing that I was talking about earlier where I first started working on it, thought it was clear. And then two or three years later, it was like, mm -mm, we got to go a little deeper. And then that's when it was finally fully released. But... At yes, the same time, yes, I was working yes, on patients. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So these are the types. So of I'm curious with the work that the the work that you do. Mm -hmm. We are in a pandemic, and there's a lot of fear that people have. A lot of not listening to their inner knowing and considering those people out there whose story changes constantly from day to day as the authority, what words of wisdom can you pass along to them in relationship to the type of work that you do that could benefit them in moving through this a little easier? Mm -hmm. All right. Whew, there's a few things. First, I just want to say that if anyone wanted to do something to you, why would they tell you about it? If I was going to put a hit out on somebody, I wouldn't be like, hey, bro, I'm going to put a hit out on you on the 23rd. You better be careful that day. No, it's going to be a sneak attack. So <laughs> if there's anything that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. quote unquote higher powers and so forth are doing, um, consciously or unconsciously, they wouldn't tell you about it. And the reason I say that is because this goes across the board that they use your fear against you. They use your fear against you. Let's say, for example, there's chemtrails in the air. Whether they're there or not, you still got to drive to work. You still got to go outside. You can still choose whether you want to go to the beach or not. You're still going to live your life. But if you're constantly worried about different things, it's going to create these fears, these imbalances, these lower vibrations within your body. And when we, whether it be the elections or a job that we're trying to secure, Especially as black people, we have an inferiority complex where we're always waiting on a savior. And no one is going to come save you. No one is going to come save me but ourselves. So we have to take our own lives back under control. I'm going to stick with these kind of conspiracy theory ideas just because they illustrate good examples. Let's say, uh, yes, let's say we have like 5G. And people are afraid of that for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Some people might say, oh, no, it's okay. I've got my organite crystal, so I'm protected. Well, an organite crystal can do a little bit. But at the end of the day, that's being lazy. Because we have electromagnetic fields within our own body. So if we eat right, if we operate on a higher vibration, if we are operating with the laws of my yacht and treating each other righteously, and we have good morality, our electromagnetic field will block out anything that anyone else can put up there. Anything. So we have to do the work. Mm -hmm. And like I said before, just be happy with your progress. Just make progress. Be patient with yourself. Like I said, five Big Macs this week, four next week. Go ahead. So you said eat right just mm -hmm. for 
people who eat five Big Macs a week. Uh-huh. You know, I used to live next to a McDonald's and I would go walking in the morning and I was just mortified by the line of cars where people were going to get their breakfast at mm-hmm. McDonald's. But so when you say eat right, give a little idea to the listeners what that might mean to increase your electromagnetic body mm-hmm. to help yourself be in a healing position. Okay. Yeah, so the idea when we start fasting or when we start to change our eating our eating habits, um, we want to be conscious consumers, conscious consumption. Like really think about what it is that you're eating. Just think about it because most of the times we don't think about it. And when, you, and when you think about it consciously, you're looking at it as replenishment and nourishment. So if I'm in the line for McDonald's, is this Big Mac nourishment for my body? Like really think about that. Ask yourself that. When you're in the line at the grocery store and there's chocolate bars sitting there, there's actually some chocolate that's good for us and helps decalcify our pineal gland, but we usually don't grab those. But when you grab that Reese's bar or the Snickers or whatever it may be, consciously think about why you're doing it. Is it just I'm just grabbing a quick sugar rush or am I not thinking about it? Or does it remind me of when my mom took me to the movies when I was a child and we watched Lion King and it was beautiful and da 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 Like, is mm-hmm. it bringing up those types of things? So now we're just starting to think consciously about it. So that's number one, because we need to start thinking for ourselves. So once we do that, we're empowering ourselves. Yeah. Now we can think about fruits, vegetables, grains. Can't go wrong with that, at least for right now. There's layers to diet. Yeah. You know, you have right. acidic fruits and non-acidic and mm-hmm. sub-acidic and don't eat bananas with berries and all this. But for most people, just stick with fruits, <laughs> vegetables and grains and you can't go wrong. And right. you'll see that you'll actually start to you'll start eating less because it actually takes several days for our body to metabolize foods. And when we keep eating, we don't give our body a chance yes. to do that. So the digestive system is just always at work. We all have eaten the big meal and got the itis afterwards. The itis is when your stomach is yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take up all the energy in your entire body to the point where you can't even think. So I'm going to need you to just like go to sleep so I can work on digesting all this food you just right. ate. And now we can't even think. So right. we're, we're doing that on a consistent small level every day we can get on someone's case and and wonder why someone committed suicide when we're committing a slow suicide Mm -hmm. every day Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know if there was a Mm -hmm. a gas station out there where the chemicals would cause your car to come to a screeching halt you would never go to that gas station but for some reason when there's a food place, when we know it's not good for us, we continue to go. We treat our cars better than we treat our bodies. Mm-hmm. And we forget that our body is the temple mm-hmm. of God. So this this is just disrespecting God every time you consciously harm yourself. Mm-hmm. So that's not knowing who you are. That's not being in conscious communion with your higher self. So those are the, mm-hmm. the basics so Super it, basics for diet. So it really, all of the, everything that you've really talked about, which is highly beneficial, and I, I just so love that you've come to do what you are doing, is one thing is about being conscious because we operate in such an unconscious way. So you're asking people to be conscious. And one of the key things, and I hope people heard it, and I want to say it again, is the idea of vibration. Because, you know, you talked about vibration in one way, but when you talk about the things that we're in fear of, we're vibrating with the thing that we're in fear of. And vibration creates what we're fearing. You know, it's, it's, if they, if people could understand better the idea of being conscious and the idea of, we are. We live in a vibratory universe. Everything vibrates. Uh, the words that we're speaking are heard, uh, are coming out through vibration and heard 
through the vibration that's happening in the whole hearing mechanism that we have here. We see through vibration, everything is vibration. And what you've honed in on is the understanding and the harnessing and the awareness of that vibration, which assists other people in their own healing. That's what I hear. Am I accurate? Oh, 100%. It's, and within those vibrations mm-hmm. and being co-creators, we have forgotten how powerful we are ourselves. Uh, back when I was doing readings, I put, a, I put a little pause on the readings for a minute, but I would sometimes get, when will I find my soulmate? Right? That, that infamous question. Mm. And that's not the best question. Because if I told you March, what are you going to do? Are you going to sit on your couch and just wait till March rolls around? Or are you going to go to the gym and work out so that you look good yeah, yeah. and do yeah, meet yeah. your soulmate? But maybe you meet your soulmate at the gym. So it depends right. on what you do. And we have given our power right. away to so many people. Um, not even like if I if I think about going to the doctor, right? If if a completely healthy person went to the mm-hmm. doctor and the doctor was like, uh, you have cancer. You would believe it. And then you would start acting like that. And then you would get your will together. Then you would try to do the last things you could do with your last three months. And you would bring it upon yourself. And that's what happens when we go to psychics and things like that. There's some that are really, really, really on point. And there's about 98% that are not. Mm-hmm. And because you've given yeah, your power to exactly. them, you bring to fruition whatever they say. Oh, you're going to lose your job in three months. So then you go to work and you kind of start subconsciously acting like you're not going to be there in three months. And lo and behold, you're not there in three months. But you brought that on. So there is nothing, Absolutely. nothing, no written document anywhere in the world that says you can't be your own doctor, that says you can't be your own healer, that says you can't be your own therapist. So let's tap into this and be that for mm-hmm. ourselves, be that for our friends and our family. But it always starts with ourselves, right? Just like, you know, when we get on an airplane, they say put yeah. your air mask on first and then help someone. That's right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. Yeah. This has been a wonderful conversation, Zion. I I really appreciate all that you are doing and what you shared with us. Will you let the audience know how they can contact you? And I think you have a class coming up. I do. I do. Um, So Zion Shabazz uh, for Instagram, Black Reverence on Instagram, and then Zion Shabazz 7 at gmail.com. So I'm here for you. That's why I'm here on this planet. That's part of my purpose is to just be here for us. So any questions that people have, feel free to reach out. Follow me on Instagram. I try to drop some some jewels there, some gems there. I have uh, a workshop that I'll actually be doing monthly to start out. We'll we'll amp up the frequency if we need to. But And during these uh, monthly workshops, I'm going to teach people how to do ancestral clearing for themselves and for their family. So this is going to be a tool that you will have for the rest of your life to work on yourself and your friends and family. Um, We're going to do the healing the woman ritual, do a fire Mm -hmm. cleanse, uh, ancestral recovery, which has to do with knowledge of self, a lot of history that we've been um, lied to about and some of our legacy that's been stolen. So we're going to help recover all of these things, have a, um, a nice lunch together, eat the right way together. Uh, <laughs> there's so much about our ancient mm-hmm. cultures around eating. Everything that we've ever done, everything that we've ever created uh, has multiple uses. There's spiritual and there's physical. So aside from nourishment and replenishment, there's a spiritual component to food as well. So we talk about all these different things and the idea yes. is to to know thyself and to start building conscious connections with other people. When I have my workshops, I want everyone to exchange numbers with each other. One person is a hairdresser, mm. one person does juices, one person's got the vitamins. Like, let's all continue to support each other and help build each other up because this is another form of a susu, right? Don't you don't have to just throw in mm. five hundred and think you're gonna get eight grand or four grand in a month. 
how about you support each other's businesses? That's going to be the long lasting thing. That's what I'm talking about. Absolutely. Right? Teach a man to fish That's or it. give a man a fish. Mm-hmm. What are you going to do? That's right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So our first All workshop right. at the new space is tomorrow. And then, like I said, we'll, we'll get them going uh, monthly. So just reach out. So Zion Shabazz. And find you on Instagram at Zion Shabazz. <laughs> Z-I-O-N-S-H-A-B-A-Z-Z. Okay. Very good. Francesca. Thank you, Zion. And no, 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 thank no, no, you no, 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 tuning no, no, no. in. Thank yes. you, sister. Give me a yes. chance to say all praise uh, and adoration, <laughs> respect and reverence to you. I love everything that you're doing. It is truly an honor mm. and a pleasure to be here and build with you. So thanks again with all of my heart for having me on your show. Absolutely. And I will be in touch with you for some more work because I've had work with Zion Shabazz. That's why he's on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah, we need each other. And what Zion brings is a very important part of, of what's needed right now. And you know what? Right now, I'm all about my people, for black people. It's needed for everybody. But right now, my concern is for black people. Black people, we need what Zion is bringing. Thank you for tuning in. Mm-hmm.